Hey guys, Ray from LoveyRV.com back at you again. And today's topic is going to be trailer tires. We just got back from our snowbird season down south. Um, probably put another maybe anywhere from eight to 10,000 miles on the rig. Um, I've always been sort of leery of uh, discussing tires. Um, it's not a subject I'm super uh, super expert on, but I get so many uh, requests through email and questions about tires. People wanting to know, you know, what brand of tires do I run? Um, what PSI I inflate them to? You know, how old before I change them out? Stuff like that. So. I thought I'd uh, take a gamble and put out a video. It can be a controversial subject. I'm sure the comments will fill up with lots of opinions. So, Anyway, um, I've been traveling in the RV now going on six years. We've probably got, I'd estimate, about 60,000 miles of uh, towing on without a flat. So I'm either really smart or really lucky probably a combination of both actually but uh, knock on wood I've never had a blowout and basically I've hardly even needed to air up the tires so must be doing something right so let me go through um, I'll go through and let you know what brands I've run and uh, also give you some tips on how I care for my, for my tires and uh, you know some of the tests I do and also some of the tools I use to do it with so let's start Okay, we'll give the supervisor a pig's ear to chomp on there. Um, so here's the, the tire that came stock with our Cougar. They're called a Power King uh, Tomax. Um, a lot of people call them China bombs because they're made in China. And uh, I guess a lot of people have had problems with them. Um, my Cougar takes a ST225-75R15 tire. Um, pretty common with most trailers. Um, the trailer runs around 10,000 pounds, so it's pretty common to have a 15 inch. Some of you guys with a lot bigger trailers are going to have uh, 16 inch tires. So uh, these uh, actually did pretty good. We went around North America with a set, almost got all the way back to BC. Uh, we went out to the Maritimes, down to Florida, and around the bottom of the US and back. And uh, I finally had to swap them out because they were uh, basically the trailer, the tread wore down. They're, uh, the STR tires, which are like special trailer tires, are a little softer than car tires, so they don't tend to last as long. You generally get maybe 10, 15, maybe 20,000 out of them. Um, so one important thing I did when I, when I changed them, I stopped at a Les Schwab dealer, and they were Power King Tomax dealers, so... They seemed to say that they were having good luck with them, so I went with a, uh, the same brand again the first time I needed a new set of tires. But rather than uh, the Load Range D here, you see marked there, I went with a Load Range E, which upped the, the capacity of the tire. Um, it also upped the PSI I could uh, fill it at. So, you know. These ones, the max PSI was 65 pounds per square inch. And when I switched to the load range E, I got to go up to 80 PSI. Um, what that did is it made quite a difference in the sidewall bulge. Um, I noticed when I was running the Ds, when the trailer was on, the sidewalls would bulge out quite a bit. And when I switched to the E's, it really stiffened them up. It also made for a little smoother towing I thought so um, the tire guy kind of said too that'd be a good idea to get a couple extra plies um, everything's just uh, a little beefier so I ran another I ran those set for another I guess 15,000 miles or so and uh, when they wore out I was gonna get another set of the Power King since obviously they were working but I just when they when they wore down I wasn't near a dealer for them so the next set I went was another so-called China bomb. <laughs> um, they were Safiro tires, and I picked them up in Blythe, California from a Goodyear dealer. I was actually going to buy Goodyears, and, and he said the farmers were having good luck with the Safaros or on their, their trailers. So 
I picked up a set of those and I've had them for another 15 or 20,000 miles, so another couple trips to the desert. Seem to go through a set every two years on average and basically not ha basically it just wears the, the tread down. I have to change them because my treads just not enough tread left on it. So the latest tire I've got just a few months ago on the way back I wanted to get a fresh set before we made it all the way up the coast and up to BC. So I went into a dealer and I was actually you know just looking for another cheaper set of tires and they had these new Goodyear Endurance tires that just came out in January. Um, they're a load range E um, but the big thing about them is they're made in the USA. I guess you know tires haven't been made too much in the USA for quite a while but Goodyear's opened a, a new plant to build these trailer tires so I kind of lucked into that just the right timing um, they also, now this is pretty important, the previous tires I had were uh, rated for a max speed of 65 miles an hour, that was their speed rating. And you know, the odd time I'd go over it briefly going down a hill or something like that, but I always had to kind of keep my speed under control and really watch it. Because um, you're right near the edge of the max rating, I think that's why a lot of people have blowouts. They, they have a max speed rating of 65 on their tires and they're bombing down the freeways at 75, 80 miles an hour. Anyway, these new Goodyear Endurance are speed rating N, which translates to 87 miles an hour. So I'm going to have a lot of extra capacity as far as speed goes. And so far I really like them. They towed smooth all the way up the coast there, lots of windy roads. Everything uh, didn't lose too much tread on the way up, so super happy with those. So. Anyway, so I'm on my fourth set of tires now. So let's next let's get into some uh, tire tips for you. Some things I do to to keep the the tires running smoothly and smoothly and try to uh, avoid blowouts. So these tips are going to be pretty basic, but they're uh, mostly aimed at those uh, new RVers that have been emailing me. Um, asking questions, at least I'll be able to point them to a video and get their answers. Kind of saves me from uh, repeating myself over and over in replies. So uh, let's start with inf if inflation of the tires. So let me go over to uh, a sticker on the side of our trailer. So here you go. Most trailers should have some sort of sticker like this somewhere. Sometimes they're at the entrance door. This is on the front side of my trailer and you can see the cold tire pressure 65 psi so that's that's what they want for the the max rated load on this trailer um, a good rule of thumb is just to, to try to do the max pressure and you should be fine um, so cold tire pressure that generally means in the morning before the trailers moved at all you uh, make sure you've got a inflation of 65 psi now that changed a bit when I went up a load range to load range E. I got a tire that was capable of 80 PSI. So there's two schools of thought. I see a lot of people online, they're going to say always put your tires at max PSI. And then there's the other folks who are saying, you know, set them for the, the load range. So how much the tire is loaded. Um, will uh, indicate how much PSI you're going to put into the tire. So what I've done is I've kind of split the middle. I, I've set mine around 70, 72. I've discussed it with several um, tire guys at the tire shops. <clears throat> they feel that's pretty good. That gives me, you know, plenty of, uh, of capacity for my load. My trailer is a little bit under 10,000 pounds and uh, also gives me some room um, sometimes you get really hot days temperature will increase your PSI and also elevation um, sometimes we'll be you know down one two thousand feet and on a day end up at five six thousand feet and as you go up in elevation your pressure is going to change and it's going to go get higher the higher you go as the air uh, gets thinner but the the air in the tire was filled closer to sea level so just gives me a little wiggle room 
Another important tip is to make sure your trailer is as level as possible, your truck and trailer combina combination. If you set it up where the nose is riding too high, you'll end up putting more weight on the back tire. Um, especially in, in a rig like mine, say I was running it quite no, nose high, and then I actually filled my water tank, which is at the back, and loaded an extra 500 pounds. Say I put my bike rack out and, and added some weight there. Well, that would put a lot more pressure on the rear set of tires. I'd have a lot more load on them. And then let's compound that by, say, I loaded a bunch of heavy stuff on one side of the rig compared to the other side, so it was kind of would put even more pressure on one of the tires and I could go over, I could overload the tire and you know you start running running fast with a little overloaded tire add to that if you under inflate it and a lot, that's where you get a lot of those blowouts that you see happen you know some people will blame the tire but but you want to make sure that each tire is fairly equal and you do that by leveling your rig and also moving weight around the rig so that uh, you move the heavy, heavy items around so you're not overloaded side to side or front to back as far as how you've loaded your storage bins. Next tip is a pretty simple one but I see a lot of people uh, don't notice or don't care but uh, don't hit stuff. <laughs> like these these curbs here. I see some people they'll cut their trailer a little sharp and they'll, they'll hit one of those curbs. Well, uh, you know, in the truck that's not going to feel like much. You might might feel a little bit of a tug, but uh, you could uh, do a, some damage to the tire internally if you if you hit a curb pretty hard, especially if you hit a sharp edge of the curb. You know, you could damage one of the internal belts and it might not fail at the time you've hit the curb or an object but it could be you know 50 or 100 miles down the road finally that gives out and that belt separates inside and you end up with quite a, a bad blowout so uh, I think I, I've really concentrated on, on when I'm turning a corner make sure I'm not gonna run over anything probably one of the reasons that's helped me avoid a blowout next tip slow the F down Holy crap, I see some people on the interstates going flying by me at 75 miles an hour towing a huge heavy load. You know, these modern trucks can really, uh, really go. They have lots of power, but uh, can't, can't tell you the number of times I see someone fly by me. And more often than not, down the road, I see them pulled over to the side changing their tires because they've blown out a tire. So it's sort of like the tortoise in the hare. <laughs> We're RVers, we have tons of time to get anywhere, we don't need to be going that fast. Um, another one on that theme sort of is to uh, always check for uh, your tires for overheating. Um, every time I stop for fuel or something I'll go in and, and feel the tires, um, also the, the, the wheels around the, the hubs there just to see if anything is getting hotter than it should be. Um, the sunny side, of course, is going to be a lot hotter than the, the shady side of the rig, but if you do it enough, you'll get a feel for what's normal. And then, say, if one tire is starting to fail and overheating, you'll know right away that it's running too hot. When I get new tires, I always make the guys uh, balance my, my wheel on the wheel balancer there. And I also get them to install uh, metal uh, valve stems and metal valve stem caps versus if you look over here on the original tire it had a, uh, a rubber valve stem so just another little bit of a uh, higher quality stuff to maybe avoid a, a problem with the stem there Okay, so one of the most asked questions is when do I replace my tires and how old is too old? So conventional wisdom as far as if you do searches on the internet anywhere between five to seven years for a trailer tire is end of life. Um, myself I prefer to go five years but Luckily for me, I wear them out in like every two years. We travel enough that it's not really a problem worrying about old tires. 
Um, as far as tread depth, um, anywhere between like two, uh, two thirty seconds of an inch is basically worn out. Um, somewhere between four thirty seconds and two thirty seconds. You can see here, if you look closely, there's a little, uh, a lot of tires have a little depth gauge here. So when the, when the tread's worn down to, to that uh, point there, it's uh, time for new tires. Sometimes they'll wear on one side a little more than others. Um, to help prevent that, I usually, about halfway through um, with a lifespan, I swap the, the back tire to the front, just rotate them. In case there's a little bit of different tread wear, I'll get a full uh, full run out of all the different tires. Um, how do I check the age? If you look on the side of a tire, you'll see down here, there's what they call a dot code. So there's a bunch of numbers, but usually down here you're looking for this number like right here we got 1610. That means 16 weeks of 2010 was when this tire's made. So for me it's probably a good idea. It's past its dew point. Even though this tire is basically brand new, it's my spare and it's just been sitting in the bed of the pickup truck for years and years. So what can happen when a tire sits like that is it can actually rot on the inside and called dry rot. And if that happens, everything looks really good. And you think, oh, these tires are really good, no problem, until you, you start using them. And they could um, separate completely. I think a lot of the, the worst, case, uh, worst case blow, it's happened with dry rot, because they'll separate on the sidewall here. And you'll get a big pelt. You know those tires you see on the highway? They call them beaver pelts. And once that separates, it's full of, you know, metal cords and things and they'll start flipping around say at 60 miles an hour and it'll do a ton of damage underneath your rig just depending like if you're under the slide out and the slide out has a lot of uh, your fridges in there and appliances it can do thousands and thousands of dollars of damage so better safe than sorry swap them out final tip involves long-term storage or parking uh, now I don't don't do this very often. We do stay here at the the RV site we're at right now. In the summer, we're here for you know four months or so. Uh, so what I do is I don't bother covering my tires. A lot of people will cover them, especially guys with motorhomes and 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 rigs like that where they they have a longer tire life. Because um, I'm wearing my tires out every two years, I'm I'm not going to get to the point where the sun really causes major damage. Um, so I just leave them as they are, but I do uh, inflate them to the full 80 psi there because they're going to be sitting, so that'll help you know lessen any flat spots. Also, every uh, month or two, I'll, I'll move the rig around a bit back and forth so they're they're not sitting on exactly the same spot. But I've never really had any problems with flat spots or any sidewall cracking and stuff. But like I say, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, leaving it parked all year for like all winter and stuff like that so I've been lucky that way so uh, you might want to do a search around for that. A lot of guys will cover them with those tire covers and uh, some folks say if you're on cement or asphalt you want to put some uh, boards under each tire get it off there because the asphalt oils or something can leach into the tire and cause problems. I've spent uh, most of my time on gravel here and never had any any problem with tires so that's about as much as I, I can say about that I'm sure after this uh, this video is published we'll get lots of uh, lots of guys commenting in the YouTube there's lots of uh, really smart people they're much smarter than me so they'll have lots of advice for people I'm sure so if you after watching this head over to YouTube or if you're on YouTube and, and check out the comments section I'm sure you'll get lots of lots of pearls of wisdom there So, speaking of comments and forums, some of the, the biggest debates I see rage in forums are whether uh, to use ST tires or LT tires. So, ST are like these ones here, they stand for special trailer tires, and they're designed 
to go on a vehicle that's not cornering at all, you know, it doesn't turn corners. Um, they generally, from what I gather, have thicker side walls for in scuffing and also they have a higher load capacity for their size, so this 15 inch tire will have a higher load capacity than say a, a 15 inch LT type tire, light truck tire. But I know a lot of guys will, because uh, of you haven't been able to get uh, ST tires in made in the USA, it's, they all are from China generally, so guys have had problems with blowouts. So a lot of people will recommend, especially with heavy trailers, they'll recommend they'll they'll go with a, an LT tire, they'll beef it up with that. Um, and a lot of times to do that, they have to actually swap the wheels. So say I wanted to go in an LT tire, I may have to make this a 15 inch or 16 inch rim, go up to a different rim size so that I to accommodate the tire. Um, I've never had a problem with my ST tires, so I'll just stick with them. They've served me well, but like I say, if, if you do a search for LT versus ST trailer tires, be prepared for some, some long reading. <laughs> some of the forums get in quite quite the debate about them. But uh, I think myself, if I had a, a much heavier trailer, say I was pulling a 30, 36 or 40 foot giant fifth wheel, I may be inclined to look at look at a light truck tire and up up the the wheel size myself. It just makes sense to me. But I'm lucky enough I've, I have a smaller trailer, so I don't feel the need. So let's finish it up with a few of the, the tools I use to take care of my tires. Got the good old tire gauge. Um, I should get one of those fancy electronic ones. A friend of mine even uh, has one that talks back to him that uh, tells him <laughs> with a voice what the <laughs> pressure is. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, also you got this is a is a tread gauge. So you just put that on the tire and it'll it'll tell you exactly how much tread is left. Um, I've also seen uh, tricks with coins. If you do a search for tread tread depth coin, there's tricks with Canadian pennies and dimes and quarters and American coins um, to uh, quickly check your tread, tread depth. Um, for heating, if you don't want to get your hands messy feeling the tire, you can get one of these uh, IR guns and it'll, it'll tell you quickly. You can just go around and point it at it. Laser will tell you what the temperature is. Um, you want to get yourself a good 12 volt pump. Um, I've had this one for quite a while, made by Slime. I don't need huge pressure in my tires, so it does the job, allows me to, to top them up if they're getting a bit low. Um, as far as maintenance on the tires, I just basically give them a good wash with soap and water every once in a while. Um, I don't add too many, uh, too many uh, like uh, tire sprays or anything. I think they kind of do more damage more good than bad, more bad than good. Um, one product I do like is this 303 protectant uh, for blocking UV. Every once in a while I'll, I'll use just a little bit on the tires, get them a, a little wipe down with that. But that's about it. There you go. I hope you found uh, a few little tips there useful, um, especially if you're a newbie, new RV or just starting out. Um, one last request I have for the for the subscribers here, anybody viewing this, is if you want to drop in your advice on a tire monitoring system, a TMPS. I'm looking at getting one next fall for our trip, and what that is is it's a uh, little things that screw onto your uh, to your tire there on the the valve stem, and it'll and it'll wirelessly tell you what your your inflation and usually your temperature your tire is in the truck. I think it would be a good idea. Most of the ones that I'm looking at though really wanting are around 300 bucks so it's a little a little pricey. It's not something I just run out and buy but I might pick up one for this next season so I'd be interested in what what people are running or what they advise. I've looked at one called I think it's Easy Tire or something and another one called Tire Minder so so any advice is appreciated. Um, until next time, this is Ray from LoveYourRV.com and Angie. I think the next video I put out is going to be one about uh, dog gadgets and advice for full timing with your little dog. So stay tuned for that. Gosh, she wants another pig's ear already. <laughs> anyway, cheers guys.